Hey everyone, welcome back to The Privacy Guy. Um, the topic I want to discuss today is um, three flaws that are commonly associated with password management tools. Um, there's a number of different password managers. I've made videos about uh, why pa using a password manager is important. Um, using strong passwords is a key step in protecting your information on the internet. Um, but there's a few flaws that most privacy management tools run into and I'm just going to discuss those so that you're aware of them and can, you know, make the checks on the privacy or on the password tools rather that you're using um, and see if you're possibly vulnerable to different security threats. So um, the issues with privacy or with, sorry, password management tools um, are one, password storage. So how the passwords are stored and the security issues associated with uh, different storage methods. Two is the reliance on remote or cloud systems, uh, storing passwords in the cloud. Three is integration with popular internet browsers. Um, so say if you're using a extension-based um, password manager, uh, there's some issues there. And then finally, um, <clears throat> many of the most popular, widely used uh, password management tools are proprietary software. And what that means is they're owned and operated by a private company and you're not able to view the source code of how your passwords are stored, um, what sort of encryption the tool uses. You can't verify any of that. Uh, you're just at the mercy of what the company claims. Um, so I'm just going to run through those. So the, the first issue is password storage. Um, I think uh, many people assume that if their passwords are stored on their computer, um, they think that the passwords are safe. And for the most part, uh, locally stored passwords are better than web-based because that means you don't have to communicate over your network to access your passwords and then your passwords aren't stored in a computer server somewhere uh, of the company that you're using. So it's a little less vulnerable to like a data breach if a data breach were to occur at a certain password management tools uh, servers or whatever, um, you would have issues. But um, the way that the best way that passwords can be stored is in an encrypted format. Um, and most password managers do this if they're privacy focused at all, security focused at all, your passwords are never stored in plain text. But there are password managers out there that don't really, you know, don't do a lot to protect your passwords when they're stored. So this can leave <clears throat> you vulnerable if your personal devices are hacked or accessed um, and then it can also leave you vulnerable uh, if there's a data breach at the enterprise level for the company that you're using. Um, so there are a bunch of different password managers. They all work quite a bit differently. Um, I just recommend using one that stores your passwords in encrypted format, hopefully not in the cloud. Um, and then some password managers even include like different encryption methods that incorporate a master password. And when you type that in, it kind of uses your master password, it plugs that into an algorithm, and then spits out uh, all of the passwords that you have stored in there. So those are some interesting solutions, and I'll probably make more videos about those soon. Um, the second issue that password managers run into is uh, relying on remote or cloud-based systems. Um, I kind of mentioned this in the first part, but um, storing your passwords not directly on your device but on a server somewhere just means it's kind of open to more vulnerabilities. So um, the fact that it has to be sent over your network, if someone's able to intercept that network activity, that could compromise your passwords. Um, and then the other issue is if you're relying on a company to store your passwords, um, it's kind of difficult to know uh, if if they're hacked, like what sort of uh, implications that could have on your passwords. Uh, typically, 
If those passwords are stored in an encrypted form, um, anyone that accesses them is not going to be able to view your passwords and won't be able to access your accounts. Um, but there's always a possibility of a company making a, an error and uh, leaving your passwords accessible to anyone that's able to access their servers. So um, that's another thing to think about. Uh, the third thing I mentioned was integration with browsers. Uh, I know there are many popular browser-based or extension-based password managers. Um, some of the most popular ones would be like a uh, password manager that's built into Chrome, uh, just the Chrome built-in password manager. Um, another example is LastPass. I've used LastPass before. I know it offers a browser extension to make your passwords more accessible when you're browsing the web. Um, password managers have run into issues before with using browser-based or um, extension-based tools because um, the browser has to be able to communicate with the password manager and if that's not done correctly, which I'm sure there have been uh, occasions in the past where that hasn't been implemented properly or there have just been errors in the code of the extension that you're using, but when the browser extension communicates with the browser, there's always an opportunity for um, information to be transmitted in plain text or in ways that a hacker or someone else could intercept and view. Um, another issue with those browser-based password managers is that they rely on cloud-based storage because um, they aren't able to store the passwords in the browser itself. So that's another thing to think about if you're using something like LastPass in its browser extension version. Um, just uh, verify that there aren't any current breaches involved with that password manager. And if you're able to view the source code, which that kind of brings me to my next point, uh, just verify that um, you know there's not any strange practices in there. And then my final point is um, that many password managers are, you know, their marketing is very privacy focused. Their claims are that they're the most secure password manager on the market. And in many cases, that's probably the case. Um, if a company is founded on privacy, um, obviously if it were to come out that they weren't doing everything they could to protect your information, that could be really harmful to them as a company and their reputation. Um, so that's just another thing to think about is um, the claims that a company makes in regards to how their tools work um, is just that, it's marketing. And um, although a lot of password managers have been verified by third party auditors and have been shown to actually be you know, good as far as privacy practices, um, it's still proprietary software and us as end users aren't able to verify how the tools work, where our passwords are stored, how they're transmitted back and forth, and that could potentially leave your passwords at risk if uh, a company, one, includes backdoors so that like government agencies are able to access their password storage, um, or two, someone at the company is able to access your passwords. So if a software engineer decides to go rogue and steal a bunch of your passwords, um, you know, obviously that would be terrible for you if they're able to access your bank account or whatever. Um, so those are a few things to think about when you're using a password manager or looking for a password manager that, that there are some vulnerabilities. And again, those are password storage. So how your passwords are stored either within the app on your device or uh, in the cloud somewhere. Uh, second is relying on cloud systems for storing your passwords. Third is the integration with browsers and using browser extension-based password managers. And then finally, just password managers that are proprietary software and um, aren't open source. Uh, so thanks for watching and uh, check back for more videos soon.